What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be building a CNC plasma table with plans that I found on YouTube. Let me give you the rundown on why I decided to build this plasma table. Here is my 1973 Dodge Charger. And right here is the eight liter Viper V10 that we just swapped into the car. This video, building the CNC plasma table, is a little side quest to our build series on the 73 Viper swapped Dodge Charger. This build is gonna be my main focus over the next few years. So let me tell you how this CNC plasma table fits into the equation. It would have been awesome if I had everything that I need to do a build like this, but unfortunately, that's not the case. This shop is over a hundred years old, so I had to make some upgrades before I could even start on this project. Now that the shop is done and we've started on the build, I need to level up my fabrication skills just like I leveled up the shop. So we're gonna be building this CNC plasma table to help me make quality custom parts in a timely manner so that this build can be truly incredible and truly custom. If you're interested in following this build, check out our Viper Swapped Dodge Charger playlist and make sure that you watch the shop renovation video and the video on installing this engine in the car. Now that that's out of the way, we can get into the main topic of this video, building the CNC plasma table. As I said, I'm using plans off of YouTube to build this plasma table so I will link that down in the description. First step is to build the frame of the plasma table, and this part is kinda up to me. I can choose the size that I need for my parts, and I'm choosing to go with quite a large table because we've got some awesome plans in the future with this table. So the dimensions of my table are going to be five by 10. That's five feet by 10 feet. I know that's a pretty big table, but we're gonna need it because we will be eventually making a chassis table for this car to go on and building a fully custom tube chassis. Five by 10 I chose so that I could cut full four by eight sheets on the plasma table since you need a bit of a larger bed than the parts that you're cutting. Let's not waste any more time. I'm gonna get straight in to fabbing up the plasma cutter frame. So we've got our first cut done, and it only took 25 minutes. So uh, I've got a little bit of a more aggressive blade that I'm gonna throw on the saw. Hopefully that'll speed things up. If not, it's gonna be a long morning. I also forgot in the shop renovation process, I broke the handle off of the tensioner for the blade. So we gotta fix that first. Our blade change definitely paid off. That cut 10 minutes off of our cut time. And on a side note, I spend a lot of time adjusting this saw to keep it straight and square. This thing is all warped now, but as it was cutting, it split this eighth inch wall right in half. So I'm really happy to see that time and adjusting and checking pay off. Also my angles here, which I also set pretty carefully are pretty precise. Let me show you how those are coming out. This is of course supposed to be a 45 degree angle. We've got 44.8. So I guess I adjusted my jaws correctly, which is awesome. That's gonna make this frame come out really nice. Gonna make it fit up really well. When building a plasma table, it's very important that you have very tight tolerances, as tight as you can get them, and everything is very accurate because the gantry will be riding on this frame. And if this frame is out of tolerance, the gantry will be out of tolerance and it'll be very hard to make accurate parts. I want my parts to be as accurate as possible so that the way I design them in CAD is the way they come off the table. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time getting everything just right. And hopefully 
we'll have a very professional and accurate plasma table when we're done. Our first frame rail is done. Now we just need to cut up three more, make some legs, weld them all together, and our frame will be complete. So we've got half of our frame built. There's a couple things I wanna tell you guys about before I go on to the other half. This setup is definitely not ideal with the ends hanging off. We wanna keep it flat and that does not help us at all, but it's the best I can do right now with what I've got. You guys probably saw me using multiple squares. The reason for that is this one is one that I had from a previous job and it's calibrated probably within a couple of thousandths of an inch. So I kind of wanted to reference that since these are just Home Depot and they'll get you close, but not perfect. However, this one being so small, isn't really a good tool for such long pieces of metal. So I ended up just referencing off of this one. I also have some suspicion that these are not perfectly straight, so that can make it confusing as well. They were reading a little bit different, but you can't expect this one to be accurate. It's more important that the far end is square with this piece, so the longer square is probably the best bet, even though it's not as accurate um, to the thousandth as this square. With that little disclaimer in there, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this end off the table and hopefully be able to prop it up and get it level. All right guys, sorry I didn't get that on camera. I hung it up in those two corners. The only reason I didn't record is I'm comfortable enough to tell you that I'm struggling, but to let you watch me struggle as bad as I did getting this up, I'm not there yet. So uh, we got it hung from the beams and I'm gonna go ahead, clamp it where I need this tube, and then we can adjust those to get everything nice and level. So as I was fitting this thing up, I noticed something that initially really upset me, but it's saveable, I think. So let me show you what happened. So it appears that my bandsaw blade wandered a little bit and decided to cut at an angle this way, which it has done sometimes in the past for various reasons. I'll have to check the adjustment again but I think it was just a fluke because all the other ones seem to be good. But all I've got to do now is shave this side down. Thankfully, it cut it to the long side instead of cutting it short. So I've just got to take this down and square this cut up and we should be all good. And then we can get this fit up again. Just like that, it's fixed. Looking super nice now. We got it squared up, now we can tack it. Well guys, the frame is looking really good so far. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna make this work, this last piece, because the frame is wider than my table. I'll probably have to do one side at a time, but I'm gonna figure that out and then get back with you. I got some help spinning this thing around. Now we'll get this final tube put in, get it all tacked together and weld it up and move on to the legs.
Now that we've got this thing all tacked up, I measured it diagonally and it is dead on. My tape measure only measures to 16 but from what I can tell, it's at most a 32nd or 64th out, which I think should be perfectly fine for what I'm going to be doing. So I set up a little fixture here to help me keep this thing square while I weld it. I've got these pucks, two on each side, and I have, of course, the clamps on it, but I also added these, I guess you'd call them pushers, and I tightened these down and gave them a whack with the hammer right on the end to push up hard against here. And that is about all we can do to keep it from pulling in, aside from the strategy for welding. So what I'm gonna do is make sure to jump around and not get the part too hot, give it plenty of time to cool down between welds, and I'm going to run, say, a weld in here, jump out here so that the pull force of this counteracts the pull force of this, and hopefully keeps everything as straight as possible. I think we should be all right. So I'm going to go ahead, get set up, and start welding it. I will be moving each corner to the table and fixturing it down with this little jig before I weld it. Nothing is gonna get welded hanging out on the ends. Now that we've got all four corners welded, I'm going to grind down these top welds, flip it over and weld the other side off camera. Now that all four corners are fully welded and ground, we can move on to the legs. I cut these legs at 24 inches, which along with this height would give us a tabletop of 26 inches off the ground, but that's a little low. So I ordered some casters with leveling feet to go on the bottom which will add five inches to our overall height and give us a tabletop height of 31 inches. This will make it a comfortable height for sliding large sheets of metal on and off of the table, but also won't be so low that I can't fit anything under it and sacrifice all that space since this thing is huge. My plan for the legs is to run one short weld on each side instead of welding them completely all the way around. There's a couple of reasons for this. The first reason is that it will help reduce the amount that this warps. If I weld all the way around, it's more likely to move things and get the table out of square or out of flatness. So one short weld on each side should be plenty to hold the legs on and it will drastically reduce the warpage. I beveled two sides of the legs so that we can make sure we get a good strong weld and the round corner on the other two sides will act as our bevel for those sides. The other reason that I'm only gonna put a few short welds on is because I do plan on getting a bigger shop in the future and I would like to have it so that this table is easy to disassemble so that I can break it down and bring it with me to my new shop. If the legs are fully welded, it would be pretty difficult to cut them off. If they're just four short welds, I can disassemble the rest of the table, cut the short welds, bring the legs with me, and then weld them back on. I did consider bolting the legs on. However, I think it would have been more work than it was worth compared to just stitch welding the legs on. The other difficult thing about that is that there's gonna be parts welding to the inside and a nut or a bolt head on the inside 
or on the top surface of the table would have gotten in the way of other parts. So I decided it'd just be quicker and easier and still easy to remove them if I just did some short welds. Now that you guys understand the plan, let's get these legs on. Now that our frame has legs, it is complete and we're ready to build the rest of the plasma table in the next video. So that's gonna end it for this one. And since it wouldn't be a Motofab performance video without some nice welds, I'm gonna get you some shots of this frame on your way out.